Danger, Darkness, Dwarves. That is the tagline to Deep Rock Galactic, the game we'll be taking a look at today in Rand's Indie Spotlight. It retails for $25. It's developed by Ghost Ship Games, published by Coffee Stain Publishing. It's currently an Xbox game preview out today, February 28th. I'm playing the Xbox One X version, although you can get it on PC. And it is an Xbox Play Anywhere title, which means if you get the Xbox version, you also get the Windows 10 version at no additional cost or vice versa. And I want to thank Microsoft for sending over the code for the purpose of this video. So Deep Rock Galactic is a co-op first sci-fi first person shooter that features Badass space dwarves, 100% destructible environments, procedurally generated caves, and endless hordes of alien monsters. And while I was playing it, I put about six hours into the title of the last couple days, the comparison that I would use is basically Deep Rock Galactic is an epic mix of Left 4 Dead mixed in with Minecraft. You can choose from four different classes of space dwarves to help you explore the procedurally generated caves of Hoxix 4. And your objective is a pretty simple one. You gotta mine as many precious minerals as you can for the company you work for, Deep Rock Galactic, while surviving uh, a whole bunch of alien uh, enemies that don't like your presence in their caves. So I didn't know what to expect from Deep Rock Galactic. The first time I saw the game was the trailer they ran at Microsoft's E3 last year. It seemed kind of interesting, but I wasn't sure if the game was for me. Well, I'm happy to say that not only is the game fun, but it has a lot to offer for people that enjoy co-op, especially online co-op. That's right, Deep Rock Galactic's probably main pull is the fact that it offers four-player online co-op and not just local co-op. I hate it when games only do local only, but this is an online experience and you can tell uh, this game was built from uh, with the idea of co-op first. You can play the game solo for those of you who want to. I've done a few solo missions. Uh, it's not as fun as working together with a team and playing with your friends, but the option is there for you to choose. Now when you start up the game you'll be loaded in a tutorial that will explain all the game mechanics. Uh, you know basically left trigger is your pickaxe and uh, you can mark things with left bumper uh, that'll show up and it'll tell you what type of mineral it is. Usually you'll have an objective to go through in a mission. Uh, it'll be like mine a certain quantity of a mineral or find a certain amount of eggs or maybe uh, kill a certain amount of target enemies and once you complete that uh, you can end the mission and to help get you through the mission especially in four player co-op you can choose from four unique classes of dwarves and team composition can be pretty vital especially when you're playing on the harder difficulty levels um, there's scout gunner engineer and driller and they're all different from one another the scout uh, kind of runs really fast has got an assault rifle and a shotgun but his of course important ability is the grappling hook he can grapple up to high areas and uh, basically light the way for your team he's a great pick especially solo uh, the engineer he can uh, put up defensive turrets uh, he can build walls or build uh, platforms on walls he has a shotgun and a grenade launcher so he's more of the defense specialist he really helps out when the waves of uh, enemies come at you you can drop those sentries uh, to take them out the gunner of course is the kind of offensive assault dwarf he has a huge mini gun combined with the pistol but also a very important zip line because these caves are quite massive at points and you'll need to get through some vertical areas and he can fire a zip line that you can go to cross these uh, chasms pretty easily and then of course you have the driller it's this dwarf kind of in a suit similar to like uh aliens he's got these uh powerful drills on both hand he can just chew through rock pretty quickly he's also got a flamethrower and uh yeah i mean the composition of the team is very important and you're gonna need to work together to survive some of the more complex cave structures and uh difficulty uh enemies because even though you can kind of, they'll start you off with uh, easier missions, 
you can kind of set a difficulty and the, depending on the difficulty you select, you'll get uh, extra uh, money and extra experience when you finish the mission. And let me tell you, when I started off doing like uh, hazard one level type missions and we bumped it up to hazard two, the difficulty is uh, is pretty apparent. You have a shield and then you have your health. Your health can only uh, come back when you mine uh, red sugar rocks. So you have to be a little bit careful. And once you get downed, your teammates can come pick you up. But man, there is a there is a there's a difficulty uh, jump there. So team composition is going to be vital. Um, but basically, it's it's an awesome co-op game. I had so much fun playing it with my buddies. Uh, you can get lost. This is kind of uh, one of the negatives, I will say, because it's a procedurally generated cave network with fully destructible environments where. They say there's no set path to complete your mission, but there kind of is. Usually, when you come into these big caves, there's always one way you can kind of look for the, the dirt. It's like brown dirt on the ground. Uh, you can kind of mine to the next area, right? But because of this, the caves are kind of like... Each, each cave looks different than the other ones. There could be, you could be walking along and then there'll, there'll be this huge 200 foot drop where if you drop down, you'll die. Um, and it can be a little bit confusing when you're trying to figure out where to go next, when you're looking for the next vein of Morkite to mine, or the next alien egg to find, or the next target you need to destroy, because those are the type of missions that you can choose from. Uh, a lot of times, me and my crew were just wonder, like walking around, throwing out your flares, because the, the, ca the caves can be pretty dark at times, and you need to be able to see so the scout can use his flare gun to light up an area and you have recharging flares that you constantly have to throw out. But sometimes we go around in the circle and we'd be looking for the next uh, area to go to. And that's kind of my biggest complaint about the game is that you can get lost extremely easy. Especially if you're playing by yourself. You know, you it, you may not find where you're going for 20 minutes. Because the, the length of these missions actually can be quite long. I had a mission last me an hour. I've had missions last me 45 minutes. Of course, I've had missions where uh, the way to go was pretty apparent and only lasted about 20 minutes. So the variety uh, of missions and the different seven different areas that you can choose to play in. That's right, there's seven different biomes. But the mission structure is pretty weird. Like, you can only choose... Like, the mission select changes every hour. And you can only choose from a certain set of missions at any given point. And yeah, the easy ones are unlocked from the beginning, and as you level up uh, and get more money at the end of each mission, you can, of course, uh, upgrade each one of the dwarves. Like, each item that the dwarf has can be upgraded with the money that you get from completing missions. So, as you play more and unlock some of the harder missions, yeah, you're going to need to be spending the experience and, and, and the uh, currency that you get from completing it to giving yourself more ammo, to giving yourself better armor, to give yourself a smaller cooldown on some of your abilities. And one of the other things is is the game can be a little bit, uh, a little, you, you'll find yourself in these scenarios where the enemies will swarm you. And it usually happens in timed intervals. Uh, they usually let you stumble around and try to mine stuff and certain times you'll hear over the intercoms hey the swarm's coming from you for you and that's where you got to set up your defenses because all these different type of aliens rush at you although there's really only maybe five different types of enemies they do come at you and on the harder difficulties they will hurt but the thing is you don't have constantly regenerating ammo you have a set amount so as we were playing last night everybody was starting to run out of ammo and it got a little bit tense because these enemies were killing us and we didn't want to die and lose all the different minerals and things you need to be able to upgrade your weapons, but we survived. And you can call in a supply drop uh, during a mission uh, when you reach 80 nitrate, which is this red mineral, and you can call in a supply drop and resupply. Uh, but it can be a little tense when you're fighting swarms of enemies and you're completely out of ammo and you need to use your pickaxe to basically kill the enemies that are coming at you. So you gotta gotta be prepared when you play. Now, like I said, the game is pretty simple. You go down into a 
area, you mine it, and when you finally get to the end, when you have enough of what you came to get, you can uh, initiate the drop pod escape sequence. And it'll take the mule, which is this little depository uh, mechanical uh, buddy that follows you around where you can dump all your minerals in when you... Uh, when you mine and, and, your, and your bag gets full, he'll go right back to the drop ship. He'll drop these green uh, lights for you to follow to get back. And usually you, you have five minutes to return to the drop ship. And that can be, <laughs> that can be quite the uh, harrowing experience because some of the dwarves are a little bit better than others. Last night we had a sequence where we dropped down into this 500 foot cave and we had to go back up the cave to get to uh, back up this drop to get to the drop pod. The problem was I was playing as the engineer and I didn't have any more uh, shots for my gun to create platforms on the wall. So it was almost impossible for me to climb up fast. Sure, I can mine with my pickaxe similar to Minecraft and create kind of a staircase going up to try to get to the top. But when you initiate that drop pod sequence, you have a five minute timer to get back to the ship and enemies start coming at you. So in that situation, the en engineer was kind of worthless. The scout, of course, is probably my favorite class because he has a grappling hook. He can just grapple himself up. And the, the gunner has a zip line. So we were playing, I was trying to get up. The gunner was trying to look for situations where he could use the zip line. Of course, my buddy Gopher, who was playing as a scout, was easily able to get back up the cave and into the ship. Now, of course, we all died, but you if, if everybody dies, the mission fails. However, all you need is one person to get back alive at the end to get your rewards, uh, all your money, all your experience. So you level up, do more missions, and get, uh, you know, spend it on upgrades. So would I recommend Deep Rock Galactic? It's an Xbox game preview. Uh, actually, yeah, I think it's well worth the $25. If you have a team to play this together, I think it's 100% worth it. I had a lot of fun playing the game, and I can't wait to check it out. And for a game preview game, it is surprisingly solid. I didn't really notice any bugs, or besides the ones you kill, of course, any issues uh, that I have in other game preview games. There are no achievements just yet. I'm sure they will add them later on, but this is a solid game. It's a lot of fun in co-op. Uh, the procedural generate cave network means that any two runs won't be the same. It's gonna be new every time. Uh, they give you the, the money at the end of each mission so you can upgrade your dwarf, so you can do the harder missions. Um, I think the game is a lot of fun and I recommend it for $25. Um, just be kind of worried that if you're looking for a solo experience, this may not be the best one. Although they do have quick join, you can kind of, if you don't have anybody to play it with in, you know, uh, party chat or whatever, they do offer like quick join where you can join other people. But yeah, man, I didn't know what to expect out of Deep Rock Galactic. I ended up really liking it. I'm going to dive back into the game, uh, play some more. But uh, yeah, I highly recommend Deep Rock Galactic for $25. It's in game preview. It has a free hour trial for those of you on the fence if you want to check it out for yourself. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at Deep Rock Galactic. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you picking the game up? If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. All that good stuff. And I'll see everybody in the next video. Later, guys.